Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm Lucas Balabran. I'm a member of the Project Jupiter from the University of São Paulo since 2018. And we're here to present our newest experiment called TikTok Control. So our presentation is divided in three parts. Firstly, we'll give you an overview of the payload. Next, we'll talk about the inverted pendulum. And finally, discuss the results and data analysis. So let's start with the overview. Our team finds the presence of a telemetry system in a camera essential to verify the flight dynamics, helping us to always improve. Also, in the recent years, there has been a growing interest for control theory in Projeto Jupiter. So it decided that the payload was the perfect opportunity to develop this skill for future projects. So first, I'll give a quick, quick overview of the telemetry. The subsystem uses a microcontroller board to read sensors, store data, and transmit it via LoRa. In order to do so, there is a 50 ohm antenna used to send signals at 915 megahertz. Additionally, we have a sensor shield connected to the microcontroller, which is responsible for taking inertial, atmospheric, and magnetic measurements. There is also a GPS based on a new blocks IC and a commercial off-the-shelf GPS operating redundantly so as to be able to find the rocket after the flight. Now, oh, talking about the camera. Uh, our action cam points out of the rocket in order to record the flight. It is fixed to the module structure by two shelves that compress it. And focusing on our pendulum, it is actuated by a DC motor driven by an H bridge that is controlled by a TNC microcontroller. As the pendulum is very light due to its fabrication, it is not expected to interfere with the flight dynamics in any way. Now I'm handing over to Vasquez, who is going to explain more about the experiment. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Lucas Vasquez, member of Projeto Jupiter since 2019, and I will be talking about the modeling of our payload. Um, given that uh, control systems are very important in multiple areas, especially in space systems, we developed this payload to deepen the team's knowledge on the subject. Uh, additionally, our team is aiming at developing future projects that require a control system, such as active fin control to reduce the rocket's rolling speed during the ascension, and the use of a parafoil to recover it. Also, uh, this experiment will help us analyze the disturbance during the flight. This will aid us to understand how each flight, uh, flight phenomenon affects our overall control performance, which will also be important for future projects. The first step to actually uh, design the pendulum's control is to accurately uh, describe its movement. Initially, it is essential to understand the system we are dealing with, acknowledging the geometry of the problem and defining the inputs and outputs of the system. Secondly, we develop a mathematical model to describe the movement of the pendulum through time. The last step for the modeling was to describe the dynamic behavior of the payload uh, through the various phases of the flight, obtaining the models that, we, that were used in the control project. Here we can see a schematic of our pendulum. As you can see, the pendulum can swing freely from left to right with its position being described by the angle lambda. And depending on the rocket's orientation, a torque appears and gravity acceleration is no more parallel to the rocket axis. Uh, to counter it, we have a DC motor which functions to create an opposite torque. Notice that there is a maximum angle with which the pendulum would hit the walls of the module, and that it was later considered in our modeling. And in this physical model, uh, we have as input the voltage that is applied to the motor, and as an output, an angle uh, of the pendulum in respect to the radial symmetry axis of the rocket. Uh, for our payload, we made some assumptions that will make our modeling simpler. Uh, first, we assume that the pendulum and the motor's shaft are both rigid bodies, uh, and we also presume that the pendulum has only one degree of freedom, so it would, uh, uh, so it can only rotate around the motor shaft. And, and finally, we presume that the movement of the payload does not interfere with the rocket's dynamics. Actually, the rocket's dynamics are considered to be the disturbance that our system will be put through. Uh, as the pendulum is a rigid body, we can use Newton-Euler equations to mathematically describe its dynamics throughout the flight. 
in order to simplify the equations, we use transformation matrices to rewrite them all in the pendulum fixed frame. We also developed a nonlinear model so that we could simulate our control system in a more realistic environment, which allows us to benchmark it. With the motion equations at hand, it is possible to linearize and simplify them in order to make the control system easier to develop. The linearization was made around the equilibrium points of the state variables. Then we obtained the, we obtained the transfer function using Laplace's transform, which allowed us to verify its open loop instabilities. In the transfer function, kv, kw, and kx are parameters that depend on the constants of the components, while the disturbances were only later considered in the simulation. And now Gustavo is going to talk more about the control. Hello, my name is Gustavo. I'm a project, Projeto Jupiter member since 2018, and I'm going to talk about the control project we developed for the inverted pendulum. So the starting point of our project was the selection of the co control specifications. Here, we basically pinpointed the main difficulties for the control performance. As already mentioned, the disturbances are a major part of any control done on a, on a rocket flight. For this reason, a disturbance rejection with maximum error of 1% for small frequencies is the first project requirement, accounting majorly for slow variations in the rocket's attitude. Then we had to take into account the measurement error of the rotary encoder which has a considerable quantization that causes a high, fre high frequency dynamic in the feedback loop. So a rejection with maximum error of 1% for high frequencies uh, is also required. Here you can see the block diagram that summarizes the control. For it, we consider that the plant is composed by both the pendulum and the motor. Its output is the pendulum's position, which is the controlled variable. In the control, the motors were, motor rotor, rotary encoder fed feedback the position. The position finally is used by the TeamSig microcontroller bar to control the pendulum through the motor's voltage. So now that we know how the control acts on the system, I'm going to give a quick overview of the steps we took to design the controller. We started by comparing different, uh, different controller topologies using the root, root lock use technique. With that, we were able to identify that both the proportional and the proportional integral controllers had this undesirable behaviors. The major problem of the proportional controller was the steady state, which occurs uh, because the plant has a type zero transfer function. Furthermore, for the PI controller using the roof Hurwitz criterion, we noticed that the system gets easily destabilized for this reason, we chose the PID controller, which had an overall favorable root locus. So with that in mind, we used the root, root locus to choose a set of parameters. We also decided to add filtering to the PID so as to minimize the high frequency effects of the derivative term. In order to choose it, we used Simulink simulation diagram with our benchmark model, uh, which we'll detail later. Here you can see the topology and the parameters of the controller we designed. As we'll see later, it achieved our specifications and had a robust stability. Here you can see the root lock use diagram for the open loop transfer function obtained with the controller of the previous slide. As shown, the system is stable at the chosen gain. As already mentioned, the specifications were met. The figure shows uh, the loop shaping restriction. You can see that the open loop transfer function does not cross the blue and the orange curves, which are the barriers for the measurement error rejection and the disturbance rejection. Additionally, during our project, we concluded that there is a considerable uncertainty in the moment of inertia, which was obtained using a 3D modeling software. For this reason, we considered a multiplicative uncertainty which was used to calculate the system robustness of the stability, as seen in the red, in the red curve. Comparing it to the complementary sensitivity, we conclude that the stability is robust. Finally, the system benchmark model was simulated using both Simulink and RocketPy. In the Simulink simulation diagram, we added other nonlinearities that weren't considered in the original model, such as the system quantization and discretization. Additionally, 
and NTYNDAP was implemented in the PID controller to avoid problems with its integrator when saturation occurs. As mentioned, in addition to Simulink, the RocketPy software allowed us to simulate the rocket dynamics and attitude, which were used as the disturbances in the Simulink simulation. Here you can see the results of the simulation for the entire flight. Considered an, an initial condition of 20 degrees, which corresponds to the situation where the pendulum reaches the maximum angle. So now we are going to analyze the critical moments of the simulation. The first one is the accommodation of the pendulum at startup. We can notice that it stabilizes in less than one second and without any major high frequency dynamics. Then you can see the other critical part of the simulation, which is the oscillation caused by dis the disripping of the parachute. Again, it, re it recovers its stability fast. Now Thiago is gonna continue the presentation. Uh, hello, my name is Thiago. And now we'll talk about the results and data analysis of the payload. In order to collect, to collect and analyze the payload and therefore complete the payload mission, a series of tests must be fulfilled. First of all, the data from the payload are transmitted during the flight and received by the direct sensor located in the ground station. Secondly, the payload is recovered with the rocket and the stored data and the SD cards are retrieved. Then, the collected data are processed in order to organize it for further analysis. After that, the control system is analyzed along with the data from the surface. To be able to complete this post-flight analysis, the team uses its own software with a customized user interface called PyRx. It is used for real-time visualization and after the flight for data analysis. Its overall structure changes here are the toolbar indicated by number one, by its useful functions such as serial setup, log file selector, graph reset, and sense changer. The interface also has sacred indicators here at number two. There are, and there are three indicators that show at all times parachute ejection and different events were detected, as well as the battery charge condition. In the graph tab at number three, the user may select this between different types of data to be visualized. What is shown in region four. The, the tabs can also be dragged in this static graph, creating new windows for more modular visualization. The window at number four is the main zone of data, where the data is plotted into graph. The GPS tab is a special attention and it shows the rocket trajectory in a three-dimensional space instead of plotting into the two-dimensional graph. There's also a sidebar with other useful data that do not need necessarily to be blocked. And also a bottom bar accessible with accessible data that are available at all times. Using that platform and other tools, we plan to compare the retrieved data with the linear and non-linear simulation in order to validate the model. It's also necessary to analyze the control performance of different of the flight and study the behavior of the system during the pressure projection and this recent event. In addition, we also study the source of the disturbance of the system and compare them with the simulation data for our flight simulation software, Rocket Pipe. Furthermore, for future improvements in the payload project, it's possible to further validate this performance by launching a multiple rocket. It's also possible to improve the control rate of the data collection of the data. So that's all about our presentation. Thank you so for watching, and I'll some questions. All right, very cool, guys. Um, so based on your uh, simulation flight data that you used, and given the mass and moment on of your pendulum, what are your expected disturbance torques on the motor? Excuse me, could you repeat, please, the, the, the last part of the question I couldn't hear properly. Yeah, what, 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 I'm, uh, what I'm really getting at is, so you have this pendulum, and you know that because of the rocket flight, it's going to be uh, disturbed, and so it's gonna, and based on the mass of that pendulum, the moment arm, it's going gonna, it's gonna to impart, it's going to have a torque on the motor, and how does that compare with the inherent torque of the motor itself, with the encoder and the mass of the 
the rotor and all that stuff. I, I wanted to see a comparison of the disturbance torque versus the inherent torque, and then compare that to the, the torque that the motor can impart and, and see how much control authority you have, basically. Oh, okay. Uh, we have a, a really high acceleration, so uh, the the I don't have a graph to show you right now, but uh, the torque caused by the the high acceleration of the rocket is higher, considerably higher than the the torque we can provide with the motor. Uh, but still, we can recover pretty quickly, and. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I don't know if anyone wants to add something. Okay, so, so if I understand you correctly, you're not expecting to be able to have sufficient control authority to maintain the pendulum during acceleration. It's just after, when, during the ballistic portion of your flight. Is that correct? Uh, no, it's kind of, uh, the objective is not uh, to avoid the pendulum for uh, of going like really uh, off. I mean, it goes off for like a quick moment and then it uh, turns back to normal, let's say. Turns back up. The, the, the great problems we faced were like, the, when I said like the rocket acceleration uh, wasn't, uh, I didn't mean the when the, it goes up. I meant during the debriefing, there is a high acceleration like uh, disturbance, it vibrates a lot. And that's what we can see here. Right? Uh, the, during the disriffing, because our, our parachute is uh, riffing, it's one yeah. parachute that is disriffed. Yeah. So, so that's what I meant. Sorry. Understood. And, and the data that you're showing here then is simulated data, correct? Have you, have you actually run this mechanism with some disturbance force? in your lab or on the ground or something that, that verifies this critical damping that you have or over damping or under damping so we couldn't actually uh test the 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 system because uh because of the pandemic so we didn't have access to a lab at all we we could uh build the pendulum uh, you can see a picture of it uh here I can go here. Uh, payload overview. So here you can see a picture of the. Oh, sorry, I went too far. Uh, here, here there is a picture we could like three D print it, but we didn't have enough tools uh, outside of our lab to to actually test it and build it completely. Do you plan to do that eventually? Yes, we do plan to do that as uh, soon as the pandemic yeah. lightens. I, I, hope, I sure hope you get that opportunity because this is cool stuff and you guys have done so much work on your modeling that I would really like to see how closely you hit the dynamics. Do you have to change your PID value once you actually build this or did you kill spot on the first shot? We fun to see. Yes, we, we want to test that as well. And of course, do a parameter identification because uh, that would uh, do a lot of difference in the modal parameters. Yeah, you did a fabulous job on all this modeling though, and you understand this, this uh, science and engineering very well. So good work. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. Well done and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll stop. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.